going to teach you how to make the diagonal textured pattern that I've been using lately. Um, I haven't invented this texture. It actually comes from this book here by Petra Tornak Zimmerman, Basic and Textured Stitches Volume 1. I'm not going to show you inside the book um, just for copyright reasons, but that's where it's coming from. So what I have here is a foundation row. I've done the forward and return pass of the foundation row. I have 26 stitches, so I started with 26 chains. Um, this pattern can be made with any even numbered multiple uh, and yeah, I'll explain why. So it's a two stitch, two row pattern and it's actually easier than you might think. So we're going to start with a decrease. So TSS two together. So we put our hook under two vertical bars, yarn over and draw up a loop. And we're going to do a yarn over from back to front. Then TSS two together, yarn over. TSS two together, yarn over. And we'll do that all the way along. I'm going nice and slowly so you can see what I'm doing. Yarn over, TSS two together, yarn over. Uh, in some of my previous patterns, you may have seen me just use the word decrease or deck. I'm starting to use TSS two together more recently because there's lots of different ways of decreasing. Um, and in some of my patterns, I'm using multiple methods. TSS two together, yarn over. TSS two together, yarn over. Uh, I'm actually looking through my phone screen to do this, so I actually can't go any faster. Why is that, hey? Anyone explain that? Okay, and we're going to finish off. So I've done a TSS two together, and then I'm going to yarn over, and then I'm doing the edge stitch. Okay, now I've got 26 loops on my hook, so if you're making a swatch, which is what I'm going to do here, um, I want it to be square, I want the same number of loops on my hook every time. So just, you can count when you finish your forward pass and you've got all your loops on your hook. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. Okay, standard return pass here, so chain 1. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way to the end until you have only one loop left on your hook. Okay. Now you'll see it's a 26 stitch swatch. It's a big swatch. I will always tell you to do a big swatch, a proper swatch. Okay, down to one loop. Just loosen my yarn off. Okay, so that was row two um, in the charts that I would make. So row one was the foundation row, row two, which is essentially the first row of the pattern. Now, what we're going to do is a slight variation on the same thing, okay? But we need, because this is a diagonal texture, we have to offset these loops. So I'll demonstrate and then I'll explain. So the first thing we're going to do is pick up the TSS, which is the TSS of the TSS two together, or the decrease. Okay, so it's just that first vertical bar, not the edge stitch, the first vertical bar. Okay, and we're going to slip it. Okay, so let me just start that again hook through the first vertical bar after the edge stitch, so not the edge stitch, yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook, okay, which is the same action as if you're doing a bind off, okay, but we're only going to do that once. Now yarn over, okay. Now we're going to do a TSS two together and we're going to start by picking up the yarn over loop from the row before and the TSS. 
So here's the yarn over loop. Okay, so we pick up that yarn over loop and the TSS, yarn over, pull through. Okay, let's keep going. So yarn over, then hook under the yarn over and the TSS, pull that through, yarn over. TSS two together using the yarn over and the TSS, yarn over. Keep going. We're going to do that all the way along until we get to the last two stitches. Okay, so I have yarn over at the end, so we're still doing that yarn over. Okay, now I've got two stitches left to work, which is a yarn over and the edge stitch. We're going to pick up a TSS in the yarn over and then the edge stitch. Okay, now I should still have 26 loops on my hook. Let's just check. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. If you don't have 26, you've missed a step. You need to go back and check it. Okay, standard return pass. Chain one, then a yarn over, pull through two. All the way to the end. our pattern now you see we've got a little bit of a cable here that goes on a slant so I'm going to repeat those two rows again and again until I have a square swatch okay and for those who aren't aware when you're swatching this is an actual gauge swatch that I'm making here I want to make enough rows so that I have a square and when I've done that then I will do a bind off row and then I'm going to wet it and squeeze all the water out and then I'm going to lay my swatch just on a towel um, and leave it there until it is fully dry. Okay, so I'm going to repeat those first two rows again. Now, as you'll see, the first stitch that we have now is a yarn over. On the previous row, it wasn't a yarn over, it was a TSS. Okay, so every second row is slightly different, but the pattern that we're working is the same. So this row, I need to start with the TSS two together. And the way that you can tell for sure about which row you're up to is that when you make a TSS two together in this diagonal pattern, you always, always, always start by putting your hook underneath the yarn over, not the TSS. So if your first stitch is a TSS, then you'll be starting off with a slip, which I'll show you on the next row. Okay, so we're going to TSS two together, yarn over, TSS two together, yarn over. And you should find these loops nice and easy to find. Um, you don't want to work this stitch pattern tightly. Uh, for those interested in the stats of what I'm using, I'm using a five and a half mil hook and I'm using four ply or fingering weight yarn. This is actually sock yarn by, um, it's called Fabulous Sock, and it was hand dyed by Skein Sisters, which is a retail store in Dulwich Hill in Sydney. Okay, so I've got all the way to the end. Now I've done my TSS two together, and I need to do a yarn over. It's because we always work in pairs, and we started this row off with the TSS two together, which means I have to finish with the yarn over. So there's my yarn over, and then I pick up my edge stitch. Okay, again, let's just double check. We should have 26 loops. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. Yippee. And we do our standard return pass again. Chain 1, yarn over, pull through 2, 
all the way to the end. And I will do one more row before I stop this video just so that you can see again and have a better idea of what the pattern will look like. You can see that diagonal texture there. I'm rather fond of it. Okay, let's get a bit more yarn. Okay, so the first stitch that's here is a TSS two together, which means that I don't want to start with a TSS two together, remember, because I want to go through the yarn over first, okay? So we're going to slip stitch into that TSS. So again, how to do that, hook under the TSS, yarn over, pull through two loops, there's your slip. Yarn over, it's the first thing you do after the slip. Then TSS two together, yarn over, TSS two together, yarn over. And see again, my first stitch that I'm going through in my TSS two together is the yarn over underneath it. So in my patterns for this stitch, I will always chart it which gives you yet another visual representation of the stitch pattern. Okay, now I did that TSS two together and here's my yarn over, but I don't have another two stitches to go through, do I? So that's how I know I'm at the end of my row. I have a yarn over and an edge stitch. So I TSS in the yarn over and then pick up my edge stitch. And again, let's just count and then you can be double, doubly short. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty two, twenty four, twenty six. Perfect. Okay, so I will do this bind off. I'm going to stop the video for now and finish the swatch, and I'll finish it up to the bind off so that you can see how to neatly bind off this stitch as well. Um, and when the swatch is finished, you'll see a really nice representation of this diagonal pattern. Just show you now, just as I pull these stitches off. Okay. So there it is, the first five rows. So remember that first row is foundation row, and then I've worked two pairs of rows. So there's one, two, three, four pretty isn't it okay so I've almost finished my swatch and as you can see we have a nice diagonal textured pattern and it's quite an open swatch so when you wet this if you pin it out it will do this right? I'm not going to pin it out I don't pin out my swatches um, but it will still open up slightly and if you make something bigger and heavier you can probably drop even more after blocking so that's just something to be mindful of so I'm just going to show you the best way to bind off in this pattern and I'm going to bind off almost in pattern okay so I have finished on oh yeah that's a row th a row two yeah, it is because that's got the yarn over at the front okay so I'm gonna pick up the yarn over and slip it and then pick up the TSS and slip that pick up the yarn over and slip it so by slip I mean you pick up the stitch you yarn over and you pull off both loops from your hook so I guess I'm not really, well, if you want to get technical, I'm not really binding off in pattern because if I was binding off in pattern, I would be doing yarn overs and TSS two togethers, which I'm not doing, but I just want to show you a nice way of neatly doing it. And it is okay also to bind off with single crochet or UK double crochet just depends on what the application is but for this purpose it's just a big line of slip stitches 
you could go in like a full stitch so from front to back like this what that will do is it will actually zigzag will do this with your bind off row some people like that so it's not really a right or a wrong way I'm just wanting to demonstrate a nice neat bind off and show you the finished swatch and just a reminder this is an unblocked swatch go back to sort of halfway through this video where I've described how to block okay so I've gone through that edge stitch and I'm just going to bind off so yarn over pull through so essentially a chain snip that yarn pull it through okay so here's my finished swatch it's a rough square and always fold your swatch into a triangle to see hey look pretty good okay so there's the diagonal textured stitch there's the back it's quite neat um, very pretty in a tonal yarn like this well it is variegated but it's not um, a harsh variegation so it is quite floral and tonal and um, it will also look fabulous just in a flat color really love the texture that this stitch creates so i hope you enjoy playing with that stitch see you next time